Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Hankook Tyre, Driving Emotion, and Car Loop, data to empower Australia's EV revolution. Hey everyone, I'm Tom, this is Joy. Hello. Welcome to an update of our SIG Energy battery running on the Amber Electric plans. Um, we're gonna go through some of the specs of the battery and our setup in general. So 40 kilowatt hour SIG Energy battery installed on the 28th of August. Uh, so it means we've almost had a full power bill with Amber, so almost a full month from August to September. Uh, we've also got an 8.4 kilowatt solar system, uh, which is getting on a bit now. Um, about five to almost, yeah, more than five to 10 years old, depending on which um, array. Uh, we've got two separate arrays, actually. There's no plans to install any more solar for the time being. We're just going to run this experiment just with a bigger battery for now. Uh, we've got, uh, at any one time in this household, um, up to two EVs. So we do charge the EVs as well together with power in the home. Uh, with Amber, we're running Smart Shift and Earnings Optimizer setting. And with the battery, it's just using the Amber VPP um, settings. So, And VPP stands for Virtual Power Plant. Thank you, Virtual Power Plant, indeed. So 40 kilowatt hour C energy battery. Plant sounds very American. Virtual plant, power plant. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, virtual power plant. Yeah. Um, and also, how do we install this? So uh, we use Solar Choice. Um, Solar Choice helped us find a very good install in our area. Very neat and tidy install, as you can see. We did a full uh, review of uh, the initial installation uh, on our channel, so check that video out as well. But if you want to find uh, an installer for your area, I certainly recommend Solar Choice. There's a link to Solar Choice on our website, so check that out in the video description below. Solar Choice and a ludicrous feed collaboration. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, the Amber Power Bill, which, as I said, we had our first Power Bill uh, this month. Okay, so you'll see on the screen now a running tally of our Power Bills since March this year. Um, we compared it to our previous providers, so previously PowerShop, and then we switched to Origin midway through last year with that EV plan discount as well. So as you can see, overall, Amber has been cheaper um, than the previous provider. I'm gonna focus now on the last line, which is August, September. You can see that uh, the average um, usage has been about 19 cents per kilowatt hour every day compared to 20 uh, for the previous provider, so pretty much neck and neck. But I guess the savings has been from the feed-in tariff on average, because Amber's a wholesale price, uh, it does vary day to day, but on average, it's been 19 cents per kilowatt hour um, for this month. And as I said, we installed the battery on the 28th of August. This bill um, starts from the 24th, so four days without this big battery, but overall, it's been using the 20, 40 kilowatt hour battery. Um, so that's better than the previous provider, which is five cents per kilowatt hour feed-in. So even though there weren't that many big spikes this month from Amber, and generally speaking, the spikes happen around either summer or winter, we've found so far from our experience. Around the moderate months, like you know spring and autumn, which we're in right now, we're in spring, I don't think we've had a single spike in the last month. No. no. When we say spike, we mean a discharge of, let's say, over a dollar per kilowatt yeah, hour. Yeah, even over a dollar. Yeah. yeah. As a I mean, we've seen it as go as high as like fifteen, mm. sixteen dollars. But Correct. yeah, anything over like when basically when it goes red in the app, <laughs> that's when we get happy. <laughs> we get a notification as well. Uh, but yeah, we've I've not seen it go red honestly in the last month. Mm. So even despite no spikes, it's still better than the previous bill, um, as you can see. Um, and we've used very similar energy as well. So nine eighty seven kilowatt hour. In fact, we've used more this month compared to last year, right? And it's still cheaper. As you can see, net total, 120 last year, 103 this year. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think that wasn't the case in our previous bill where um, I think we actually used less than we normally did because mm. of the spikes. Yeah. I think we, we, we actually changed our usage Correct. because of the, of the spikes. Changed our behaviour. Yeah, yes. yeah. Where else here, it's like because there were no spikes, we we're like, well, we might as well just run it, as Correct. you can see. But so it was still cheaper. It's changed our behaviour. Mm. I just want to make a special mention of June, July. So you might go through the spreadsheet, which by the way, there's a link in the video description as well, as a link to Amber, our mates rates, which gets you a discount as well. Um, I'll just point to June, July, and for the first time, the previous provider was actually cheaper for, by a few dollars, but that's because last year this time, in that June, July period, we were actually away overseas yes. for three weeks. So we used far less electricity last year compared yeah. to this year. So that's, it's missing basically three weeks worth of winter electricity yeah. use, so. Okay, so that, that's um, the running tally so far. We'll keep running with that uh, month to month or at least every couple of months mm. to keep you guys informed. 
Um, yeah, so we should probably talk about the behavior of the battery in the past month with Amber. So uh, we switched from a Tesla Powerwall 2, as you may have seen from our previous videos, if you follow the channel, to this new battery uh, three or four weeks ago. We actually had to disengage the Powerwall 2 from Amber uh, and then put this new battery on with Amber. For a while, we were running two batteries on the app, which confused the battery and Amber. So make sure you do tell Amber that you're switching batteries if you do switch from a previous yeah. battery to the new one. It is all through the app, but um, obviously we don't do this every day. So mm. just, you know, I think, did, was it a phone call or live chat? What, how did you Yeah, do I the emailed them, I believe. Okay, yeah. Mm. And they like sorted it magically. Very responsive. So mm -hmm. yeah, just, just get in contact with their customer support. They're very good. They're very good with uh, emails. Mm. Uh, they're, they're, I think they're currently inundated with, um, with inquiries obviously with the federal government's rebate so if you, you phone call them they may ask you to leave a message but i think email is quite a good way to correspond okay. with them um so we probably should talk about the behavior of the battery so i think with amber um it does take a little while for the ai to to learn your usage patterns right so you might spend the first couple of weeks like watching the app every day making sure it's doing the right thing but i think after a while you do have to trust it because i'll show you on the app it, it has been doing the right thing over the last few weeks. And when I say the right thing, I mean, obviously the, the best way to utilize a battery like this is to charge from either your solar system or from the grid when it's cheap during the day, right? So you want it to obviously charge cheap or charge low and then discharge when it's high or self power your home when it's high. That's the best behavior for this battery, and which it has been doing. If I show you the historical data um, of our battery. Okay, so you see today's metrics, right? So what it's been doing today is it's been charging up from the grid and solar as well. And we've got a 25 kilowatt inverter, so it can actually pull quite a lot from the grid. You can see here on the stats up to 19 kilowatts, which is a lot compared to say our Powerwall 2, which was five, and the Powerwall 3 is only, I think 10 as well. So this is much better with a bigger inverter. And that's another reason why we went SIG, because it's scalable, it's modular, you can fit whatever inver size inverter you want up to six battery packs per unit, including a DC charger, which we're planning to hopefully do. I know some people are being worried about the fact that we are close to the roof. Well, not that close, but we're at the moment it's compliant, but I'll have to check with the installer whether it's okay to put a DC module uh, as well uh, on top of this. And given that we're an indoor environment in our garage, that's obviously something we'll, we'll check once we come to installing a DC module on top of this, or at least in between the inverter and the last module. Um, so stay tuned for that. That is the future of this um, battery to add a DC charging module, which is bi-directional. So you can export from a car, for example, an electric car with a bigger battery back to the grid. So stay tuned for that. But that is today's um, <clears throat> behavior, which has been good. Um, charging from the grid when it's cheap. Uh, at the moment, Amber is... I think it's about six cents. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Joy <laughs> predicted it right. You don't watch, up the, watch the app, do no. you? No. <laughs> so six cents is pretty cheap. That's... I've seen it go to four, maybe four cents. That's even pretty cheaper. cheap. Yeah, no, I've maybe. seen it even cheaper. Even cheaper. Yeah. Joy is watching the app, as oh, you can I see. Watch the app. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason it's charging from the grid today is because it's cloudy. Yes, so, correct. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I think in summer, I think we could fill the entire battery in summer purely on solar. We'll see. Yeah. Mm. We'll watch. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at the behavior of the past few days. So let's have a look. Twenty sixth of September. You can see. Yes, it does pulse from the grid throughout the day. I think we were charging the car briefly yep. as well. I was charging. And then at night time, or well, at least in the evening, you can see at 5.30, it does discharge um, back to the grid there at um, 22 kilowatts. So if there's a good price, you know, it may not necessarily have been that good yesterday, but still good enough. It was a fair price. Was yeah, it, it was, 16, I think it was, 15? no, not even that, maybe no. like 13 or 14. 13, yeah. yeah. But obviously we want that to go higher, right? Like $15, <laughs> that's when we celebrate and cheer and turn everything off in the house. Um, <laughs> That's the 25th, <clears throat> uh, 25th was like that, discharging there. And then the 24th, very similar behavior. You can see historically it's been quite good. So we've been trusting the app charged during the day when it's cheap or when the solar is plentiful. And see this 23rd's been quite good. So the AI predicted that, uh, you know, there was a bit of a dip during the day, right? Because it was cloudy mm. between say 11 and 12.31. And then it charged up during the start of the day when it was a lot cheaper or when there's more solar in the system? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know about that. I, I do feel that even if it's cloudy in the middle of the day, it's still cheaper than anyway. Mm, it doesn't actually make that much of a difference. But nothing beats solar, right? Especially when the tariffs are negative for solar. You might as well charge um, solar and the grid when it's cheaper mm. during the day, right? Same with the 20 seconds. So I can go on and on. It's It's been working pretty well, actually. Um, 
with with uh, with Amber and Sig Energy so far. Yeah. And like, I have to keep telling myself, don't fuss about days like this when we're talking about scents. It you really make it all back. Just you just need a few minutes even worth of a price spike um you know later in summer yep. um and it, it makes all all these other days in spring like just negligible really. it's that's very yeah. true yeah a, a one price spike per month will just negate all the little yes. <laughs> little games you can make <laughs> just charging and charging yeah yep. yeah it's like you know buy for four cents sell for like 10 cents it's like <laughs> that's nothing and yeah. then yeah you just need one one day of a price spike another question i want to address is that some people have been saying well Using a wholesaler like Amber or VPP like Amber will actually increase the cycling in your battery. I just want to dispel that a little bit because if you look at the historical pattern, we're not like discharging and charging all the time. It's literally charging at once during the day and then discharging it at the right time. So it's actually optimizing the time that it discharges so that you get the best result. You get the most money, you know, you get the most uh, amount of money discharged back to the grid, mm. right? If that makes sense. So it's not like it's doing this all the time. It's just charging once and then discharging at the right time. So it's optimizing the earnings, yep. if that makes sense. So yeah, I mean, I think if you didn't have Amber, you would have done the same. You would have charged up with solar and then discharged at night time. So we're just optimizing when it's discharging to minimize our power bills or make money. This other metric is quite good now. I sort of worked out this very complicated um, a graphic. So if you just individualize each one, so solar, so on the 14th, you could see 30% of the solar went to the battery, 60% went to the home, and the 2% went to the grid. And then battery, the same. 92% um, of the battery went to load, 7% went to the grid. And the grid charged 43% of the battery and 56% to the home. And then the other way around, so battery received 65% from the grid, 34% from solar. And you can see the, the balance or the distribution of the load from the various so sources. So this is the one I want to see. Oh, sorry, that mm. is the one I want to see in summer because I reckon it can pretty much be like 90%, 100% solar yeah. going to the battery we'll in see. summer. We'll see, we'll see. We shall Let, see. Let's even just, yeah, so even between, say, the last few days, let's have a look at the battery. So you're starting to see more uh, generation from solar into the battery compared to, say, two weeks ago even. Mm. So because it's, yeah. More sun. We're getting more sun. Yep, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's um, that's SIG Energy. It's been working pretty well. And people, another question someone asked as well is like, or a few people have asked is, what's how noisy is the battery, right? So at the moment, it's it's only charging two point four kilowatts. So I'll put the decibel meter up so you can see. It does get significantly noisier than this. So yeah. So currently it's All right. So it's about seventy kilowatts if I stop talking. Decibels. Sorry, seventy decibels. Um, yeah, 70 decibels, thereabouts, just on two kilowatts. But let's let's just for a second, let's just manually charge it. Okay, so I go to the current mode and let's just go instant manual control. Let's charge for say the next 30 minutes. Let's do that. It's just gonna ramp up now. You can even hear it behind me, whirring. All right, here's the decibel meter again. Sounds like it's gonna take off. Put it right next to the vent, which is over here. Okay, so on the app, it's charging at about 19 kilowatts. So it's about as high as it'll go, and I can feel the battery getting quite warm. So about mid 70s, so not terribly. In interestingly, it didn't really loud. actually get louder. It just got became a higher pitch, mm. isn't it? It worked a it lot was a, it, It's a lower pitch, and then as the fan or whatever Word. started spinning, it, it actually just became a higher pitch sound, but not actually louder. Yeah, don't forget decibels is logarithmic, so 70 to 75. That is true, That's that is lot. significantly yeah. more. But, I don't know, I expected it to be even louder than this, but mm. it's... Yeah, it's not terribly loud. Mm. I'm going to stop charging, otherwise it's going to muck up the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> right, just stop that now. There we go. All right, um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much a rundown of our battery and um, bill. Mm -hmm. I guess I was going to talk about the expectation in summer, but I, that's the number one thing I think we expect, which is um, the spikes. Hopefully the spikes. Hope we're hoping for. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> We exactly. are hoping for price spikes in that's summer right. now. That's right, because that will make it all worthwhile, right? Because yeah. at the moment, it's like not, not much difference between even our old battery and this one. Uh, it's the spikes that will really make this worthwhile, so.
we'll see. We'll see how we go. And of course, future videos will hopefully incorporate a DC charger bi-directional module once it gets a bit cheaper, or at least um, SIG Energy will come to the party and hopefully let, uh, let us borrow one or let us use one so we can test all the different press cars that we get, uh, all the different EVs to make sure they all work. That would be quite valuable, I think, for the EV community. And if you're thinking about buying an EV moving forward. Otherwise, I think that will be it for today. After one power bill with Amber, mm -hmm. again. As in two, with this battery. And the battery. Too early to yeah. tell for now, but uh, signs are promising, I think. Any final thoughts? No, I guess spring is hard because it's, um yeah, there's no, it's, it's very even, isn't it? Mm. So while that's great for probably everybody else, <laughs> it's not great for if you're actually trying to sell, yeah, yeah. sell um, electricity back. Yeah. Mm. And look, it's good to be self-sufficient. Yes, we're happy with that. But yeah, the aim is to try and pay this back quicker. Yeah, as fast as possible, which yeah. is understandable. Yeah, mm. and then, yeah, it'd be great to be self-consuming after that. We might even add solar later on once, I guess, the pricing levels as Australia gets more batteries, more renewables in the system. It's good to be more self-powered, right? Okay, well, that's it from Joy and myself, SIG Energy Battery. Thank you, Solar Choice. Link in the video description below. Thank you, Amber. A link as well to our referral. Thanks for watching. Until next time, the Ludicrous Feed, it's happy charging.